Let me start by asking you both about your, your first experience of, of Le Bardier. Olga, where, where, did you, where did you see it? Well, I sort of grew up with it because I went to school in when Leningrad. And of course, uh, it's the ballet that has stayed in the rep practically uh, non-stop and only there. Uh, it has not been uh, danced in Moscow, for instance, for quite a long period. Uh, so uh, yes, I grew up with it as a teenager. Um, and actually, first time I saw it, I must have been about six or seven, and it was just a scene of shapes. So, uh, but backstage, so to speak, I've been um, I've been staging Natasha's production since eighty nine, which says something about my age. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bana, what about you? When did you first see Le Bader? Um, I think I saw it in early 90s um, in London and um, I hadn't seen that much ballet so and I was really interested because at that point I was actually an Indian dancer I was doing Indian classical dance so I was just amazed to see that there was a ballet which had an Indian dancer as its, um, in its main role and um, I think in the first five minutes, I think my first reaction was to get up and shout, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a strange experience. I mean, obviously, as a dancer and someone who at that time was just beginning to choreograph, there was just so much to love. Um, I mean, like the scene that we just saw. It was one of my favorite scenes. And I think especially so... Indian there. Well, you know, in a way, <laughs> that's what I find very Indian. It's not in the rhetoric of uh, what people wear, but like all good theater, and Indian classical dance is full of uh, scenes like that, which are about very um, care, a lot of care for gestures, for psychological impact, for the sheer drama, and for the projection of some things in a great sort of iconic manner. So that's something that actually, it's not just Indian probably, but that's just of all great dance mm -hmm. and drama all over the world. Did you have any sense of authenticity in any way about it, or was it a pastiche for you, an, an Indian scene mm. rather than reality? Not really, there's nothing that I think that is authentically Indian or anything that reminds me of Indian classical dance. I suppose the only scene that's vaguely Indian um, is that scene with the lady with the pot and the two little girls who are trying to oh, ask her to give her some water. Action. Yeah, but in the original yes. one. So um, I think it's in the Paris Opera Ballet version of it. So that one, because it's a scene that sometimes comes up in Indian classical dance performances, mm -hmm. There's a character called Radha who carries, not water, but actually milk, and people do ask. So apart from that, there isn't really anything that, I mean, that's why, you know, cultural appropriation probably isn't uh, the right word, because it isn't really appropriating anything from Indian culture as such. Because Petipa, the great dance maker, prided himself on being accurate, didn't he, with his, mm, with no, his natural No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you see, you have to put it into the larger perspective of 1870s and, or second half of, uh, of 19th century, where um, a lot of ballets, I mean, uh, a lot of ballets are situated, uh, placed in imaginary uh, fantasy fantasy lands, be it Egypt, be it underwater Danube, be it uh, India. It, and it, I don't think it's meant to be historically accurate. Um, it's, it's a sort of, um, every time a different setup is a pretext for dance. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not the only, exotic or orientalia ballet, uh, as it is not, as we have operas and we have painting after all, <laughs> you know, um, that is certainly not accurate, um, but it's part of its time 
And I think the strength uh, in this case, you know, not talking very largely, but, but specifically the strength of Bayader, which happened to have a very lucky in many ways um, fate, um, is I would say, uh, well, it's a combination. Yes, of course, it's the way that the drama um, unfolds and so on. It's, it's a bit quite gripping, if that's the English word. Uh, but um, it's actually in the white scene. Every classical ballet of that period has what we call a white act. Uh, but I think the one, um, the, the, the scene of shades in Bayader is quite unique because uh, Minkus is Minkus. We all know he wrote music. He was uh, told how, how many bars of this and that he has to write. But I think that in case of Shades, it's a very um, happy union. And it's, it's an extraordinary choreography. It's, it's a sort of, it's, it's really pure minimalism um, because uh, the, the, the group of girls, it's not just made out, you know, they repeat the step that Nikia dances or, or, or does before she dies, bitten by a snake. Um, and so it's, it's sort of a continuous uh, string of girls who, who, who come on as, 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 you know, it's happening in his head. It's not a reality. And, and I think when, when, the new, fantastically. when the new Mariinsky Theatre opened, they were able to, to, to show off the width of the stage in, in early productions. There were, I think, 48 dancers. 32. The, but I think they went up, I read they went up to 48 at, at, uh, in, in, at the Marinsky on a few, a, a few occasions. But there's that, there's that sense, Shabana, isn't there, of it being a, a kind of impressionistic moment of dance that seems, seems way ahead of its time in, mm. in many ways. Yes, but actually, you know, as a contemporary choreographer, I think that's, you know, it's an amazing act to, to see that, you know, even at that time, actually there was a kind of a, a real enjoyment of just pure movement for itself. But I mean, this is one of the things that, you know, well, you ask me about watching for the first time, is a sort of um, a real, um, I was just torn between so many different emotions. You know, on one hand, there's this beautiful scene, but as an, um, for, for coming from my background, one of the things I also notice is that throughout the whole of the ballet, people wear these exotic costumes, suddenly when they're in heaven, they're wearing white tutus. <laughs> and, well, and you could have think, uh, so maybe in heaven they don't have harem pants? It's a question I'm I sure ask myself. Not in 1870. <laughs> they don't have No, pants no, in, in 1870 there's no way you could have mm. a white act other than in white tutu. Mm. Yeah. You know, okay. it's... Uh, it was just one of those fixed <laughs> points of the Russian ballet that had that. Uh, Russian or French or, well, there wasn't much else, but, <laughs> but, but <laughs> yes, it's in, inimaginable. Yeah. Actually, it, the, it was quite interesting when you talk about accuracy, because there's one thing that's incredibly accurate, is actually where the ballet is set, because it says, at the court of Golconda. And actually, not many Indians even remember Golconda now. But when I was researching the background of his ballet, I was actually quite amazed because Golconda is near modern day Hyderabad. And it was actually very, very, very rich Muslim court because it was near a diamond mine. Actually, that's where the Kohinoor, which is in the Queen's Crown, and the Hulk diamonds, a lot of very famous diamond actually came from Golconda. So in some ways it's, you know, I was always kind of quite fascinated that, it, that he chose that particular court that particular place in South India to set this ballet. Your research was when you were creating your work, The Ninth Light, mm. here at the, the Linbury yeah. Theatre at Covent Garden um, three years ago now. Mm. What did you want to do with that? How did you want to move the, the Bayadere concept forward? Well, one thing I didn't want, to, there was more, not much point in me, restaging it with Indian dancers because actually I don't think, you know, the plot is a kind of a universal plot of love and betrayal and death. So um, 
But for me, what was interesting, um, because when I saw that ballet, what I wanted to find out immediately was, you know, why that ballet had been composed, why was it set in India? And one of the things that I found out in my research is that in 1838, for the very, very first time, mm -hmm. uh, a French impresario actually brought five Indian classical dancers, temple dancers yeah. from South India to Paris. And I think Lucy and Petipa actually might have seen one of their shows. Um, and of course, uh, Théophile Gautier wrote in his diary about his encounter mm -hmm. with these Bayadas. So and they became huge stars, didn't they? I mean, they if did. you hadn't seen the Bayadas, you, you'd somehow yes. failed. In, in I don't think people, everyone liked, certainly when they came to the Adelphi in London, they had horrible reviews. <laughs> um, so, but I think it was definitely the thing to do. You had to go and see this, the real Bayadas. Mm -hmm. And also the whole concept of the Bayadé, you know, where it had come from, it really, the first person to mention the word Bayadé was Marco Polo. So it really mm -hmm. came from the sort of travel writing and the sort of exoticization of the East, which was very popular in the 19th century. But obviously, you know, now in those days when there wasn't a lot of information known about India or the East, it had a particular potency, mm -hmm. but now, you know, in some ways, um, the whole kind of orientalist history. I think it, it will make an interesting context to a ballet mm. like La Bayada, not to diminish any of the enjoyment that people get, but I think in some ways, it would make it easier for people to understand why that ballet looks like the way it does mm. now. Yeah. Olga, Natalia's energy and passion for this piece, is, yes. as we've seen so far this evening, is undimmed after such a, a long association Absolutely. with it. When, when, did the, when did you start working with her on this and how did that um, process In 88, 89 that season, actually, yes. Because I think yeah. she had, she'd first staged the-, the, the In New York. The, the, that's the scene where of Shades in, in New York alone. Uh, not just the scene of Shades and then eventually the whole ballet. And, uh, and I was then uh, working in American Ballet Theatre. It was at the time of uh, Baryshnikov as a director. So I was not there at the original staging uh, in New York, but I, that's where I learned the ballet and, um, and then pass it on. And how much of Petipa remains? I mean, that, that <coughs> journey that's of a good question. original thought. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. And not just with Bayer. I would say it's definitely the uh, Shades scene. Uh, which is, you know, in, in, in my view, it is, it is, it is a masterpiece. Uh, uh, it's unique. It's mm -hmm. unique. Uh, and it's a um, stepping stone for any company. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, and a hard one. Um, um, it is that. It is certain parts of a uh, wedding scene of Pas uh, not everything. There are not, not everything. And uh, a lot of the mime actually is, uh, is based on what, what it was now. Tempi were different. There were a lot of things that, you know, we don't dance the way dancers danced in 1870s. It's inconceivable um, nowadays. Um, but this is the, the, the fine line, you know, to, to keep the, um, and that again, I mean, it's not anything that's specific just to buy there, but in classical ballet. Um, and in, in this case, you add the, the oriental or um, pseudo-oriental um, element to it. But the balance between um, a style, a specific, uh, you know, I, I call it sort of signature elements um, for, for each ballet, there are certain, certain poses that that uh, that principal characters have which are um, you cannot um, mix them mm. with with anything else that they belong to this ballet so between that but not making it a, um, a dusty uh, 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 well just just something which which is which is empty and and and, and formal it the this the shape is filled from, from within, and you know, that's, that's a hard job. So Petipa would still see plenty together. of evidence um, of his Petipa involvement. Petipa did, did uh, wonderful, wonderful things, and, um, and uh, you know, his, uh, his uh, Hudekov, wasn't it, who, who, wrote the, who wrote the scenario, the 
libretto, whatever you call it. Um, yes, it's, I think it's, to, you know, you can't look for authentic, it's not, it's not a historical, uh, it's full of, full of, uh, um, faults, mm. faults, historical faults, uh, uh, ethnographical uh, faults, faults, uh, mm. uh, geographical, and so on and so forth. But yeah. you know, I don't, I don't read Indian papers. But you open an Italian paper, mm. and every day, you know, there is a fidanzata who uh, stabbed a fidanzato <laughs> or or her rival, and so on and so forth. I all mean, over the world. Uh, these are these are the. I think it's very authentically it's Oriental. And I think the Oriental is very different to the Indian. Yes. I think that's really what I'm talking so about. So it is like so those pictures that Olga was mentioning earlier yeah. on and that obsession with Orientalism yeah, that, that's that swept, right. I mean, it's swept a across Europe. It's a fantastic Europe. Oriental text, and, but it's not an Indian no. text. No. You know, they're two different no, things. No, but, but, but yeah. you, know, you, you look at Delacroix or, or I mean, Poussin, starting from and, and all the way to Ingres, I mean, it's all yeah. Orientalia. Uh, that is. Of course, not authentic. Mm -hmm. And it was how most it's people saw the. It's part of the culture yeah. of that time. Can I finish by asking mm -hmm. about Bayadere today? Here we are in in 2018, watching a ballet with dancers who, by and large, are not of Indian or Asian heritage, wearing idealized, exoticized versions of of Indian dress. Does that cause any any problems for for, for you? I think it'll only cause problems if people confuse it with India. So. As long as that is made really clear, that it's got nothing at all to do with India, apart from the word Golconda, maybe, uh, <laughs> I think that will be fine. Mm. But I think if there's any um, confusion, mm. I think that's rather sad mm. to me. I mean, it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't actually stop anyone enjoying the choreography or the movement or the brilliant dancing, mm. nothing at all. But it's just that as long as we understand that there was something historically and culturally very separate called Orientalism. And there was a very definite mm -hmm. reason why it became so popular. And I think as long as we signal that, I think that'll be fine. So I think that really needs to be signaled, mm. I feel. I think that's a very good line you said about don't think of it as being about India, think of it as being about this, yeah. this concept of, yeah. of, of the Orient. Uh, Shabana, Olga, thank you both very much indeed. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.